This is a video showing a simulation of how pathogens travel in a traditional airplane cabin. You can see a blue burb representing a pathogen move from a passenger who has just sneezed and into the space around them. And here's a simulation of the same thing happening in a cabin with improved airflow designed by Raymond Wang, a grade 11 student at St. George's School in Vancouver. Yes, the 17-year-old invented a device that curbs disease transmissions on airplanes and it led him to an international prize for science innovation. He joins us now with more. Good afternoon, Raymond. Thanks for coming in. Oh, well, thanks for having me here. Congratulations. Uh, what was it that uh, triggered you to pursue this project and uh, where'd you get the idea for it? Well, uh, I've had the love of science and engineering for many years. Mm -hmm. I've done science fairs and uh, various national fairs, but it was really the dream to actually go to the International Science Fair. And it was actually back in December when there was this whole Ebola incident. Um, and uh, that triggered me to start looking into epidemics. And I found some pretty scary statistics. For example, places like the CDC has actually found that a passenger with something like H1N1, when they walk onto a plane, they can actually transmit disease to up to 17 other people per flight. And when I started looking into what's already being done in the industry about these things, I find that there's very limited knowledge about about cabin airflow in general, and much less is there anyone who's tried to actually design something that's economically feasible to curb disease spread. And so what did you come up with? So I came up with this over here. It is a cabin inlet director. And basically what you're able to do with this is uh, stick it in uh, some key cabin inlets inside the aircraft of say like a typical 737 and you're actually able to redirect the airflow to create these virtual walls of air which uh, basically uh, decrease pathogen inhalation for the passengers by up to 55 times and increase fresh air inhalation by up to 190 percent. So you're making different segments of air, am I understanding that right? Or you're, you're creating walls? Yes, yeah, so basically what happens in the traditional airplane, as we saw in the video earlier, is that you have these large turbulent swirls of air that basically spread disease all over the place. Right. And what you're able to do with this is instead direct the, uh, direct the air to do something way more useful, which is to create these virtual walls of air that separate each, uh, each of the passengers and give them individual personalized breathing zones so that no matter where you're sitting in the cabin, if someone next to you sneezes, you're covered. So when you presented this uh, in Pittsburgh at the International Science Fair, what was the reaction? Well, um, I had the good, um, the good fortune to have some of the judges actually coming from the airline industry, from places like Boeing and from um, airlines themselves. And they really saw the potential of this to be implemented in real airplanes. And so this is a patent pending design that I have. And I'm looking to use this and as well in the next few months to start actually coming and getting into these discussions with these aircraft manufacturers to really get this implemented and making a difference as soon as possible. What happens in the patent process? Uh, well, um, I've obtained a provisional patent yeah. and uh, moving forward with that, there's also uh, many other steps associated with getting this implemented into real life, including passing regulatory approvals and uh, getting a, uh, a full, full on patent. And um, I'm just hoping to use those next two months to really move it along. So we just saw a video there of the announcement uh, that you won and you uh, accepting the award. What was going through your head at the time? Well, it was totally unexpected. You know, I was, it, I was so blessed to to feel, I, I felt so blessed to even go to the International Science Fair and to actually like be recognized with first place. It was so humbling and it was such an honor. Um, it, it was just absolutely unbelievable. Yeah, clearly you're up against some very uh, <laughs> tough competition. What were the numbers? Um, there were about 1,700 uh, participants coming around from 60 to 70 countries around the world. And, you know, there's people competing in all sorts of different categories. So there's people doing some great work with engineering mechanics, some people uh, building these killer robots, and uh, some people tackling issues um, with medicine and finding cures and ways to new ways to diagnose disease. It was absolutely mind-blowing. So what do you, what, you're grade 11 at St. George's, what, where do you go next? Well, I'm hoping to, I still have one more year of high school, but uh, after that I'm hoping to uh, go into university to study some engineering as well as business, because it's one thing to have all these great ideas, but um, it's another thing to be able to actually use business practices and to be able to actually implement these ideas and get them working in the real world. Well, Raymond, congratulations. It's uh, an amazing story. Uh, I'm sure we'll be talking to you somewhere down the road. On behalf of uh, Air, 
airline travelers everywhere. I thank you for coming yes. up <laughs> with the concept to have our own air bubble. Yeah. Well, thank That's you very, very much. nice. I love it. Yeah, congratulations, yeah. Raymond. Thanks. Thanks so much. Thanks so much, Raymond.